Hey, it's Mike from Drive80.com, and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial about uh, positioning. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a new comp, and we're going to hit Command N for new. Make sure it's 1920 by 1080 square pixels, 23.976. That's just how I like to animate uh, resolution full, and keep it at a minute. Keep the background color black, and we're going to hit OK. Um, so we're just keep this as named as comp, and we're going to draw a square in the middle of the screen. So uh, we can go up here and we can just grab a rectangle tool there and we can draw a square. Or what I like to do is I'm very good with, I'm huge with key commands. So I'm going to hit Q because that is going to grab the rectangle tool. And I'm going to hold shift and draw a square. Shift command A to deselect this guy. Just kind of like, I'm going to throw some random things in here, which you might have to pay attention for. So I have it here. Now I want my anchor point always to be in the center. So to get that, I hit Y. Or I could go up here to where the anchor tool is and or anchor point tool is and grab it from here. But again, I want to be efficient and fast. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to move him around into the middle. So I hold command and it locks it to the middle. So all right, so I got my square. I got here is the time that I'm existing in. It's a minute. And I want to exist in this space down here. So I'm hitting the plus sign to zoom in a little bit more. And I'm going to hit N to close my workspace. That means when I go to preview, it's just going to live in this space. It's not gonna, I'm not gonna need a full minute to show me what I just did. So I'm going to start off, um, I've got my shape tool here. I'm gonna change this, hit return and say box. And I'm just gonna just work in the transform area, which is the position tool we're gonna show, we're gonna talk about. So in doing this, uh, all I need to do is I could do these drop downs. I could grab the position tool and start working with it. But when I'm doing that and I'm only working with position, I'm seeing all this other crap that's kind of just getting in my way. So if I want to have just position by itself, I hit P. And that would just bring up the position tool. If I wanted to add to it, I can, if I want to change this out to scale, I hit S. If I wanted to change it back to P, I'd hit P. But if I wanted to scale to also exist here, I'd hold shift and hit S. But I don't need scale. We're not talking about that. We're going back to position, hitting position. All right. We're going to start off with a keyframe. And that is this little watch right here. OK, and that's going to start off with our first keyframe. Now I can click this, and it creates this little diamond right here, which represents the point in time of where I am. But I don't want to do that. I want to hit Option P, because I want you guys to get used to using quick keys. And I'm going to zoom in by hitting the plus sign. Now, at this point in time, which is around, if I zoom out, around a second, I'm going to make him move to the right. So I'm going to drag him, and I'm going to hold shift and move right. You see, as my arrow is going up and down, it's locking that in there. But if I wasn't holding shift, I, I can move it freely. But I want to have it straight here. And then I want, at two seconds, I want it to go as a, as a rainbow effect over to the left. Now, and we're going to get into that in a second. So what this means is at this point in time, my center point is here. And then at one second, my guy, I live here. And at two seconds, I'm here. Now, this is how this looks right now. If I hit Control-0, which is basically the same thing as hitting the play button. And you'll see when I do that, there's these little green areas here are going to fill up in the green. What that's doing is, is After Effects is just saying, like, all right, well, we have to fill in these gaps with movement. So just give us a second and watch this thing fill up with green. And then when it's full and green, we're just going to keep looping this thing back and forth at real time. So control zero, and you'll see the green's filling. And now we're going back and forth. So what we're doing is it's going middle to right and then right to left. And you see the right to left's going a little bit faster because it's not this the, the space between here and here. here is a lot greater, but the time to get there to, is about the same time as it took to go from the middle to the right. So in time, you, you it pretty much makes sense. Um, if it's people that doesn't make sense out there, I mean, you'll understand that um, after a while. It's basically like you have to see things within distance and time, and it just becomes just very apparent as you're animating. So if I'm at this point, I'm like, all right, well, I wanted him to loop. So what I could do is I could add another keyframe here, and I could say, well, at this point in time. I see where I began, I see where my second point is, I see where my end point is. I am going to drag you up, and it's going to create that path as this nice little loop to go to here. Now, that's good and all, but it's not very efficient, and you're adding just too many keyframes that are unnecessary. I'm going to delete that keyframe and say, like, I don't want to have a keyframe here. I want to control the path that I'm on. So when you see when I selected this guy, this little tiny point came in. And what that is, is that controls 
where how that line is created. So if I if I stay here and go up, it's like it's it's more like it's loop it's kind of curving at the end. But if I start dragging towards the middle, it's you know it's getting that center point where it's, it looks a little bit more like a solid line. Now the only problem you see here as well is that it's kind of like when it goes over here and I zoom in. Once it hits over here, it's doing this weird kind of up effect. So if I want to change that around, I can grab the pen tool by coming up here and getting the pen tool. Or if I hit G, I can now mess with this to make this a little bit smoother. And if I just grab this endpoint and move it, it's going to kind of mess. Like, it, like I could drag this around, and you can see like the loop's a little bit different. And I can bring it to here, and that makes sense. Or... I can hit this guy once, and it's just going to make that transition uh, angular. So I zoom out, and I'll see, okay, cool, now it gets to here, and it's going to zoom, it's going to just kind of do this little loop. So I'll hit Control-0, and what it's doing is it gets to the middle, to the end, and it goes, boom, okay, I'm over there. Now, if I want to shorten that time, all I do is shorten the time between this, the time and the distance. So the distance is the time is at this point, and this is at the distance marker. If I just drag this in closer to the left, since we're starting at zero seconds, and this is getting to, you know, going up to a minute, and we're saying like, all right, well, in this point in time, we're working within like two, almost three seconds, but the action's happening around two seconds. Let's make the action complete before that. So I hit Control Zero. It's basically going. Uh, slow, boom, going like faster over. Now, if I want to add a little bit more life to this guy, and let's say like, all right, well, at that point, he's a bit too high to this, you know, to the top of the, the uh, screen here. So I can either drag this down, which is cool, or if I wanted to move this whole thing down completely, I would have to select all of these points and then drag what, any of the areas of where it is and move it up and down. Now, if I did that without selecting everything, and I was just like, okay, well, I'm just going to hit this guy and move it down. Um, yeah, well, now it's, that's changing that position, and it's going to get really messed up. So make sure you drag over all your keyframes and you move it down. And now we're going to mess with the kind of like the speed of it a little bit. So I'm going to kind of close this up a tiny bit, and I'm going to select these guys and go to the graph editor here. Now. Actually, sorry, before I do that, I want to grab these guys and I want to control click on this and add an ease, which would bring up this um, drop down, keyframe assistant, and I go to ease ease. So now what it's doing is it's like it, we go to the graph editor, it's adding these loops. And prior to that, we saw there were like more boxes. So it's kind of like it's just going in a very just blunt movement and we want it to get smooth. And what this is showing is the speed that it takes to get here. So the higher the loop, the faster it's going to go, and the lower is the is when it stops. But at this point, this point in time is slower than it is here, and that's what causes that kind of it, it adds a little bit more of a life to it. So it's like a it's like a, it's ramping up and down. So it's like ramping up to fast, then slowing down, then going fast, then slowing back down again. And you can see that if I hit Control Zero, you'll see that there's a little bit more of a it's like it kind of speeds up there in the beginning where it's just like slow, fast, slow, and then fast, slow. Now, if I wanted to change that, if I was like, well, I want to start off faster, I would just drag this dude over because what it's doing is increasing the speed early on. Let me bring this guy down. Oops, oops. What am I doing? What am I doing? All right. It's going to increase the speed faster in the beginning and then slow it down for a longer length of time. And then let's say, let's kind of ease that into there where it's going to be fast, slow, fast, slow, like slow. And, and the slow is going to, it's fast and slow is going to happen a lot sooner. So hit control zero. And it's like, you see that it's like kind of a whipping effect. So it's like slow. So it's, it's kind of like, it's like, it's hitting there in the speed. It's got to slow down because it gives it, it's like it gives it weight. So it's like, this looks heavier now because it takes more time to slow down, and then it's whipping over here. So that's the graph editor. That's the position tool. Um, and that's how you can control these things. Another quick tip is, it, let's say that you wanted to move this closer. You can go here. But if you wanted to keep 
all of these guys together, you can hit Option, select this dude, and then move it over, and it's gonna it's gonna move all the keyframes and just subtract in the distance between all of them. That right there has gotten me out of so many, has, has saved me so much freaking time. It's unreal. So if I close it down, you'll see it's gonna just do this whole thing a hell of a lot faster. It's like, boom, and I'm done. Let me close this off so it just loops a little bit better. There we go. And if I wanted to be like, oh, I really don't want it to do that fast, I'd hit Option, I'd click on the end point, and I'd move it over. If I clicked on the middle, it wouldn't work. There's a hole. Uh, if I do click on the beginning, though, it will close that distance up. So now if I, if I preview this, you know, obviously it's going to take longer because we have to fill up three seconds. But it just looks more lifelike when you do that. And that's why I think the graph editor is amazing. So a lot of things you could do with the position tool. And... Um, so that's it. That's like hopefully that was a quick enough tutorial. I don't even know what point I'm at right now in time. But um, have any questions? Comment below. I can kind of dive into this deeper. But really want to just focus on the position tool, and I'll have other tutorials which you can. We'll dive into the other uh, tools. Which if I hit U twice, nope, that won't do it. <laughs> if I just do the drop down and I hit transition transform, we can focus on scale, rotation, opacity, anchor point. I never really use. Um, I just usually use position. And don't worry about that. But I'm going to dive into the scale, rotation, opacity, and other videos. So uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you comment below and ask questions. Feel free to share this with anyone else who's learning After Effects. And um, that's it. Again, Mike from DriveID.com. And thank you.